What's going on, coders, and welcome to episode two of our form service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video, we're going to be exploring a topic called the properties of a form. So, like any Google product within the G Suite, there are the data that the actual application manages, and then there's also metadata associated with that data. So, in the context of a Google form, you would have your data, so you would have your questions that you would ask or your multiple choice questions or fill in the blank questions. This would be the actual data that you were gathering from a respondent. However, there is metadata associated with that form, which would be say like the title of a form or whether the form is accepting answers or not or whether it's classified as a quiz or not. These are all the metadata associated with the data and these are called properties. So again, the metadata in terms of a form is called the properties of the form and then the data itself is called items of that form and we're going to look at items in an upcoming video but for now let's tackle the properties so the top seven methods that I have for you today and again there are a lot more methods for setting properties of a form I just chose my top seven that I use most frequently and they are set title set description set destination set collect email set confirmation message set limit, limit one response per user, and finally, get published URL. So let's take a quick example of each of these methods in the code right now. Again, there are a great many number of properties which App Scripts allows you to both get and set within a form. We're only going to be looking at seven of them today, some of my favorites that I use quite frequently in my work. However, I would strongly encourage you to check out the documentation below and look at all the methods which App Scripts provides for you both to modify and access all of those, again, properties on the form. All right, so let's get right down to it. We have a lot to cover in so little time. All right, so the first couple of properties that we are going to uh, check out are the title description and the email collection. All right, so all of these methods are accessed directly from the form class. So when you're either opening a new form or you're creating a new form, you can set these methods or get these methods right off of that new form. So let's check out set title. All right, so again, let's check out actually first our, our form that we created in the last episode. I, you can see that I have added two new questions right here. The title currently is my form and there is no description, but let's change some of this right now. So let's set the title and the title is going to be my new title. And by the way, when you have these properties or when you have these methods that are changing the properties, uh, what they do is they return, let me just uh, show you right here. So they return the same form. So what that means is that you can chain all of these methods together. So you can put all of these properties into one big execution and then uh, set all of them in one foul swoop. All right, so now we can drop a line, put a period. Again, we're chaining the methods together. We'll say set description now. So this takes in one parameter, the description. This is pretty self-explanatory. We'll just say, please complete this form for the good of humanity. Great. So let's look at one more method and that is set collect email. So if we say set collect email, we can see that it takes one required parameter, which is a Boolean. So on, on de or by default, when you create a new form, uh, whenever a user or a respondent uh, submits their responses, that is going to be anonymous, right? So there's nowhere on here where you can say, yep, where, or what is your name, or uh, Google doesn't track who is actually responding to the email, or at least you do not have the data for that. However, if you set collect email equal to true, or you pass in this Boolean true, that means that there is going to be a required field that pops up a required question that pops up that says, please input your email address. So let me just run that right now just to show you. So we'll hit save, we'll hit run. It ran successfully, so let's check out our new form. And here it is, we have our new title, my new title, we have the description right up here. Please complete this form for the good of humanity. And then as I was saying just uh, a few seconds ago, here is the email address, it says, 
this form is collecting email address is so you'll have to when you're responding to this form you'll have to put in your valid email address right here and this little red asterisk means again that this is a required question that you must fill out all right so that is some of the uh properties so far let's take a look at a couple more so the next one that we're going to look at is set destination so what this means is sometimes when or when you, when you get all your responses right you can go right to this tab you can go to the form itself and and the form will collect and record all your responses right here we don't have any right now uh, but if we do start gathering responses we can we will we'll be able to see them populated right in this area right here however sometimes you'll want to do more elaborate data analysis and that is when uh, and that is a use case for right Google Sheets so you can actually put all of your responses in a Google Sheet itself and the way to do that programmatically at least is to use this method set destination so as you can see we have two different parameters that are required the first is called type and this is actually a form app enum so we have to access the parent class of form app we'll select destination type and if you hit the period button you can actually see that there's only one destination currently and I think this is because app script may in the future add more destinations um, but for right now there's only one and that is a spreadsheet so we'll just comply by their rules and we'll say uh, the destination type is going to be a spreadsheet and then this ID parameter is none other than the ID of the spreadsheet itself and as we see before this can be found right in the URL so we'll paste that in between two quotes because it needs to be a string and if we had save we hit run then we can go back into our Google sheet and as you can see we have a new tab right here it's called form responses one and there's this little nice icon uh, which is the icon for Google Forms indicating that we are indeed linked to this form and we have our field names email address what is your income level what is your favorite hobby which are the questions that we are asking right here and then also in addition we have the timestamp when this form was submitted so that's a little nice added bonus all right let's comment that out and move on to the very next method which is going to be a confirmation message and limit one response per user so first again we need our form we'll say set confirmation message so this is basically going to be when whenever a respondent submits their form what message do you want them to receive as like a confirmation so we'll just say thank you for completing this form all right and then we'll add another method we'll look at set limit one response per user so this is a fairly long-winded uh, method title but uh, what this says is basically if you go into a form Google is going to if if we say a set limit one response per user equal to true that Google is going to require you to take this form using an, uh, a Gmail account right and then it's going to now if you submit that form it's going to track that this Gmail account has already submitted the form and they're not allowed to resubmit another form so we'll see an example of that momentarily uh, for now though let's just uh, save this and run it all right, everything ran successfully and if we now go into our settings into our presentation we can see our confirmation has been set uh, accurately but let's just now pretend that we are uh, a, a user taking this for the first time so again we can see that this email address is required that is our collect email equal to true so we'll say David the Weiss 7 at gmail.com was my income level let's just go middle of the road 60k to 85k what is your favorite hobby of course it's going to be app scripting which is indeed true and now if we say submit we should see our confirmation thank you for completing this form and if we go into our spreadsheet now we have our uh, record in 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 this form responses tab right here which has all of our data that we just inputted into the form so that is pretty dang cool Oh yeah, and by the way, if we try now to take this same form from the same email address, so let's click on this button again, it's going to say you've already responded. You can only fill out this form once. So that is, again, our 
set limit one response per user method in action right here. All right, so there's one more method that I want to cover with you guys today, and that is get published URL. So you usually wouldn't do this off of a form that's already existing, just because, again, you already have the URL to that. But let's say that you are uh, creating a new form. Let's say you say formapp.create, and then you set that equal to, say, uh, form. Now you can do all your configuration and then at the end of the script you can say form.get published URL and then what you can do is you can send this published URL say to um, a gmail app dot send email or you can include this published URL in an email somewhere and then you can send a bunch of emails to a lot of different uh, people that you think would enjoy taking your form. And that is why get published URL would be so, so helpful in this use case uh, right here. Because again, once you create a form programmatically, the only way to get that uh, URL is to access this uh, method right here, get published URL. Of course, you could always go to the form itself and get the URL, uh, get the published URL. But uh, programmatically, you can do it through this method right here, get published URL. All right, guys, I know that was a lot, and there is still more to explore. Again, I would recommend that you check out the documentation, and if you have any questions below, uh, or if you have any questions, please comment them down below. But if you enjoyed this video and learned something, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the very next episode.